Jared Poland Fronos Photo dot com and this is your What? Have we all gone mad? I guess so, Pete. Photo News Fix. This fix is brought to you by me and my free guide to capturing motion in low light situations. Now to get this free guide, simply look for this orange box over on fronosphoto.com, put your name, email address in it, hit send it, and I'm gonna send you that guide for free. First up, is TikTok working on a photo app to compete with Instagram? No. Well, there's something funny about that statement right there because didn't Instagram change their entire app to try and copy TikTok? No, they didn't. Oh, yes, they did. Now, here we are with news that code was found in the latest version of TikTok that's referencing something called TikTok photos. Guess what? I'm not anti that at all. If TikTok can pull off a separate app that's focused on photography, I'll be there to try and expand and my following. Now, with that being said, I don't currently have TikTok downloaded on my phone for a few reasons. One, it's super addicting and you can get stuck wasting hours mindlessly scrolling. And two, it's dangerous. Yeah, it is dangerous. For as much as we're being told our data is safe and the Chinese government doesn't have access to your info, well, they, they kind of have shown that they do because TikTok has admitted on spying on reporters' accounts. They looked at IP addresses of journalists who were using the app in an attempt to learn if they were in the same location as employees suspected of leaking confidential information. Yeah, and that's not good at all. And that also brings up the so-called TikTok ban Bad in the USA. and why it comes about because it's a national security risk. China is using TikTok to elevate content and spread misinformation to foment dissent along with creating confusion. In fact, the day of the vote in the United States Congress, TikTok used its influence to push a notification to users saying, on election day, we'll see who's banned in the USA. Congress is planning a total ban of TikTok that would strip 170 million Americans of their constitutional right to free expression and encourage people to call their Congress Congressman. Now, isn't it funny that a Chinese company is saying anything that has to do with a constitution or people's freedom? It's ironic. In fact, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, Reddit, and a bunch of other social media apps are already banned by China. So yeah, the Chinese government is using TikTok to try and influence people in the United States. The moral of the story, ByteDance is going to have to sell to a company that's not controlled by the CCP, and I think that will happen and will be better off for it. Look, TikTok is one of the best social media apps out there for spreading information. The problem is, if China is able to spread misinformation that causes us to fight here, Rito, shoot you first. I don't care. Well, that's a win for them and not a win for us. So I look forward to TikTok being sold and being out of Chinese hands. Next up, Sony Alpha Rumors is reporting that Sigma will be announcing a 50 millimeter F 1.2 E-mount lens during a live stream on March 26th. Phone call, oh, I wonder who that could be. Hello, uh, it's Jacqueline with Sigma PR. Fine, fine, okay, I'll, I'll let them know. And it's also available for the Sony Alpha Rumors is saying that the lens will be lighter and more compact and priced better than Sony's 51.2 GM. Now I have to tell you that Sony's 51.2 is going to be hard to beat because it's one of the best lenses that I've ever used. It's smaller and more compact than the Nikon 51.2 and even smaller than Canon's 51.2. It's simply a fantastic lens. Now with that being said, it's priced at $1,900 and if the rumor is true and Sigma does release a a 51.2 competitor, it's gonna have to be significantly less more expensive. Yeah, significantly less more expensive, Jared. It's gonna have to be significantly less more it's gonna have to be significantly less expensive than Sony's and also have pretty comparable focus to get my considerations. Now, if this rumor is true, how much will the Sigma need to be in order to get your consideration to get it over the Sony? Let me know down below. And finally, in a news story that dropped after we filmed last week's photo news fix, Nikon has released firmware 5.0 for the Nikon Z9. Oh, no! 
Now, usually when a firmware goes up a whole number, like four to five, it means something big has happened. So instead of me telling you if something big has happened here, let me tell you what Nikon added and you let me know down below what you think. Was it big? or not. Now the biggest update in 5.0 was made to auto capture. For those that don't know what auto capture is, it's an amazing feature that allows you to set the Nikon Z9 to automatically capture images when certain conditions are met. Now for example, you're trying to capture a bear shitting in the woods. So you set up a camera near where you think a bear is going to shit in the woods. And if a bear decides to shit in the woods and walks in front of your Nikon Z9, then bam, it takes a photo. Now that was new in 4.0 and 5.0. 5.0 improves on auto capture by allowing you to specify a time and date to start or stop shooting. This way, if you know that a bear only goes to the bathroom around 11.23 a.m., then you can set the camera to 11 a.m. to start shooting and not waste all of the battery or unwanted shots on something else walking across your screen. 5.0 also adds frequency presets for typical LED lighting and signboards to the high frequency flicker reduction mode. Now, now this is a nice mode to have because I don't think there's other cameras that have presets for specific flickering boards. And according to my buddy Greg, it works really well and he's been testing it out at basketball games. There's also other minor updates, including portrait picture controls. You can change the width of the focus point border as if a thicker border will somehow help you with your focus. Ooh, oh, he said it. And they also added a feature called focus point face priority, which is meant to automatically zoom in on the face during playback for you to check your focus. Now that's funny because I always have my camera set to zoom in on where my focus point was, which 99% of the time it should be on the face or the eyes, unless you're using a Nikon. Yeah, so I'm not sure how much of a benefit it is to find the face if the face isn't the thing that is in focus. Now I know a bunch of people are gonna get upset that I'm saying this shouldn't have been a 5.0 firmware. It should have been something like 4.2 or honestly firmware 3.6. But at the end of the day, fresh updates are always welcomed over no updates. And there you have it, Jared Polinfronosphoto.com. See ya.